yes, that's it, testing. <laughs> Don't tap it, though. Sound men hate that. Uh, and so I've asked Rosie just to share a little bit about her journey and her God story, what God's done in your life, Rosie. Hi, how are you going? Um, uh, I'm the youngest of five. Um, a lot of the negative thoughts and feelings that I had growing up were the result of a fairly troubled family life and situation. Um, I found that I didn't have a strong sense of uh, identity, security um, or self-worth. Um, my father had left before I was born so I didn't know him or my cultural background until about my early 20s. Uh, and then finally when I was about 23 I met him at a, at a busy train station in Sydney. Um, he had such a heavy accent I could hardly understand him um, but I found that he was quite an angry and very bitter man and um, hated God. Um, but uh, I did introduce him to his first grandchild, Aaron, and, uh, and that made him very happy. Um, I had planned to go to Italy and be with him, but uh, he'd passed away about a year after that. Um, the man that I had known as my dad, my stepfather, had abused um, myself and my three sisters for several years. Um, and I didn't blame my mother as my sisters had because she didn't know it was happening to us um, and I'm sure she would have done something because she had also been abused by her stepfather as a young woman. Um, so she basically raised us kids and supported us on a barmaid's wage and it wasn't very much and she was always very busy and doing a lot of overtime so we didn't get to see her very much. But. Um, there was quite a bit of stigma and shame attached to being a barmaid and being the child of a barmaid. Um, but when I was 14 or 15 years old, my mother, um, for some reason, invited me to uh, go to a youth camp. And, uh, and there I gave my heart to the Lord and it was the most incredibly joyful and releasing experience that I'd yeah. ever had. And it was like a weight had been taken off me. Um, and it was just incredible and I thank God for that. Um, um, sorry. Um, I, I was told at that camp that God loved me and that I would never be alone again. And that has kept me anchored right. through some of the darkest yeah. times right. in my life. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I have that, that real sense that God is with me and, uh, and that I wouldn't be alone. Um, he has been my refuge and my strength and he has kept me from self-harm, substance abuse and poor mental health that those closest to me had suffered from. Um, and when I've chosen to reach for him, even desperately sometimes, um, I found that he has helped me and he has um, really encouraged me. And it's only been when I have either been offended and, um, you know, not trusted him that uh, and gone my own way and, and doubted his perfect will for my life, that I've nearly derailed my life. But God is so faithful and he always kept yeah, me. Right, and that's right. the wonderful thing about God. He is faithful even when we're not. Mm. And so I thank him for that. Mm. Um, he has placed value on my life because of who he is, um, because he's a wonderful father and a wonderful saviour. And I find that as I keep choosing to believe his word and hold on to his promises, I have seen that change and transformation. And it hasn't been easy. I have struggled with accepting his love and approval and favour sometimes. But I know as I just keep beating that path in the jungle of wholeness and a sound yeah, mind, yeah. and rather than that easy, familiar path of... Um, wrong thinking and worthlessness, I really have seen such a victory in my life. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there are some great books out there and, and there are some wonderful professional people that can help you function in life on a better level. But there is no one like Jesus Christ yeah, who, can, yeah. who can heal, who can restore and bring hope to your life. Yeah. And he has certainly done that for my life. Um, uh, sorry, I... I just know that there is power in the name of Jesus Christ and there is power to break strongholds over your life and you can take back that ground right. that he's robbed from you. And, and I know I have seen that in my life. 
Um, there is power in the blood of Jesus because of what he's done on the cross to remove that sin and shame and to bring you in right relationship with him so you don't have to keep struggling for his approval. You know, God has done things in my life because of his grace, not my best efforts or my performance. It is him. And I found that I have a, a purpose and a destiny more than I could ever have imagined. And I have a beautiful, loving and patient husband and three beautiful sons. And, and I thank God every day that he keeps doing those things in my life. And um, yeah, sometimes it is a struggle, but I know that I've got to keep choosing to believe his word and his promises, not what I think yeah. about myself. Yeah. They are just lies, you know, and, you know, and God can do so many, sorry, so many good things in your life. But, you know, sometimes you can have that excess denied. But if you ask him into your heart, and even if you already have done that, keep doing that. Yeah. Keep hanging yeah. on because he's never going to let go of you. And um, and he has a plan for our lives. we just got to trust that plan. You know, awesome. he's such a good God. So. <laughs> that was great, Rosie. Thank you. Let's thank Rosie. God bless you. That was fantastic. I love what God does in people's lives. Thank you so much, Rosie, for being so open with your story. And, uh, and I, it never ceases to amaze me. You know, there's always more going on in people's lives than you realise. You know what I mean? Like, you just, you know, I've known Rosie for years and it probably wasn't until uh, she was part of our internship program this year, is part of it, and uh, we were actually just working on uh, telling our stories and how to tell our stories. And, uh, and Rosie's came up and she shared it in class and... Uh, uh, I just said, you've got to share that to the church because we need to hear that stuff. Yeah. We need to sort of hear that other people go through things and that God is faithful in their lives. And I guess it, it really fits in with what I want to speak about today. I want to talk to us today about the value or the, the power of landmarks in our lives, the need to establish clear landmarks on our journey of life. It's a